All right. Uh, hey, welcome to Jacob's Chatter. And uh, this is my guest, Ben Katzner. Hello. Thanks for being here. Good to see you. What's up, Jacob? Good to see you. Uh, looks like you just got done either burying a body or doing a bunch of push-ups. What's going on with you? Uh, yeah, I was doing push-ups while I was burying a body. That's uh, classic. That's how I do it. Um, but uh, yeah, how about you? How's your? How are you doing? How's your quarantine? <laughs> Good. I haven't buried any bodies. I have been doing a couple push-ups. I will awesome. say I do about three to four push-ups every six to seven days. And I feel like it's paying off. You know? Yeah, yeah you I can see. see. You see awesome. this? Look at this definition, wow. dog. Look at this. It's great. I was going to say you have a lot more definition than the last time I saw you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's paying off for sure. Yeah. Thank you. That, I appreciate that. What's your kind of day-to-day quarantine schedule like with trying to keep up with comedy or other things like has anything changed or what is things that stayed the same you know sure uh first uh usually I, I still have my day job uh until it looks like july 1st at least and then i i temp at this office but i'm able to work from home so mm -hmm. i've been doing that that's eight until five usually during that just really on social media a bunch, you know, just really hanging out pretty hard on social media. Um, after that, uh, after work, I'll usually, um, I'm quarantining with my girlfriend. She's also working from home. So during the day, we'll kind of bug each other a little bit, but we, uh, after we're both done with work, so that's always nice. Then maybe we'll like pop on some show that we're watching or do a little uh, alone time, maybe read a book in separate rooms or something, whatever, you know. Oh, like, awesome. I don't, it's not like a, it's like a routine. It's just like organically turned into a routine, but it's not, it's nothing like what I was really doing before, you know, and like you asked about comedy. It's like, I don't know, I guess occasionally I will write down a joke if something comes to me, but um, I feel like the idea of doing comedy right now seems so crazy to me that I haven't, I don't have like a hard comedy routine currently. Yeah, for sure. Are you enjoying doing online shows or is that kind of not your thing or how it's, do you feel about it? So it's not my thing, but the ones that I've done have been fun. I've been very lucky that the people that the shows that I've done, uh, they care about it, which is great, but it's, I've missed, you know, I miss being in front of an audience and being able to like actively engage. Um, and it's nice because like, I can't tell, like on a Zoom show, sometimes I've literally had people like bring their computers out to the parking lot while they go smoke or something. And I'm just like, I don't really need to see all that, you know, back, I just, you know, tell me I suck, you know, just give me, give me the old feedback. I don't like this new feedback where you're like paying attention to the show, but you can still live your life. That's not what I want yeah for sure yeah it's it's weird it's like if you're inside a tv show but you could see what everyone was doing watching like they're treating it like tv but exactly. they don't realize that you can like i mean i know comedians used to do that joke at live shows like oh this isn't tv but like it feels like tv now for right. Zoom shows just like an adjustment i guess they took away a heckle from us that's uh, or like a, a stock line you know like how yeah if if there's anything that's bad about this coronavirus i don't know i don't know if there's anything that I, yeah if there's one thing that's bad it's that they really stole a good stock line from us you know yeah what's next, what's next? <laughs> is covid19 gonna take away the hey i don't come to your job and slap the dick out of your mouth is it gonna take that away from us you know that's uh a lot of people in the news are saying that that's the worst thing that has happened from corona is that yeah there's like two go-to heckler lines that comedians can't use that's but you know the liberal point. media you're never going to hear about that on the liberal media I'll yeah no they're all about like oh the death toll is yeah oh insane. people are sick and dying Help another them. great depression also yeah mm. um wow that's crazy well uh what you mentioned you were reading during this what are there, is there anything you're enjoying reading right now <laughs> I, I shouldn't have started with reading i i have read i did read i think we'll call it a book and a half i think i started one of them before We'll call it pre-core, if you will. Uh, sure, sure. But uh, yeah, I think the one I started before quarantine was uh, Exhalation by, I think it's Ted Chang or something like that. He, I, he's the guy who wrote, um, ah, what's the movie with 
the aliens and they're right with Amy Adams or whatever. It's the book. Oh. I can't think of the oh, name of the book. Is movie. it Arrival? Yes, it's that. I think That's he wrote book. I think he wrote the book that that movie was based off of. Oh, cool. Um, and then the one I started in quarantine that truly took me forever to get into and like navigate and figure out was House of Leaves. Um, I already forgot who the author is, but it's like this is book about um, I'm not going to call it a haunted. There's like something crazy about this house in like Virginia or something and people weird stuff happens. And it's, it's not haunted. It's I they don't. It's almost like it's it's like a different dimension rather than it's being haunted. I don't I don't think that gives anything oh, away. The okay. house is like crazy. But the way the book is set up is like soup. It's very meta. Like you're reading like someone's interpretation of someone else's interpretation of like a, a found footage tape that's been like uh, examined by different um, education people and stuff. So it's like it's a little wow. it's a little bit dense, but like if you and and they I don't know why they do it's so frustrating, but like to be different and like to show you how different the world you're in is. Mm -hmm. like the pages aren't always like traditional it's not always left to right up down whatever it's like sometimes you got to flip the book sometimes it's like half sometimes the words are like this and like if you can wow. get over that bullshit once you get i would say about halfway into the book it's pretty good but it just takes a little bit wow um yeah that sounds pretty intense i don't know if i could i can barely handle books that are just go in order um i already I like confused I I would love to see you reading someday, just like hanging upside down on like a bench and being like, oh, you're reading the book I talked about. I think that'd be <laughs> You have to do like yoga poses to be able to decipher some of the chapters. You got to be an athlete. If you really want to read, you got to be physically fit. Everybody's always said that. So you're, so you were, when you mentioned doing push-ups, that was just to get ready to read this book, basically. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I know library season is coming up and I'm going to do a couple <laughs> push-ups to get ready for it, for sure. That's awesome. Um, yeah um cool yeah i feel like it's a good time to catch up on reading i realize like i'm a pretty slow reader but i'm kind of slowly working my way through a couple of books um and uh i don't know we'll see how that goes what are you reading wait can i ask you am i <laughs> able to give this back or are you just yeah yeah sure answers yeah i, I really i really am not good at planning so that would actually help me uh sure. a lot. Sure. Well, what are you doing? What are like? What are you reading? What are you doing to stay busy? If you're um, that's a good question. I guess I've been, um, yeah, I have been reading a couple. Of, I'm reading this one book called Laws of Human Nature that I like a lot. Um, it's this guy Robert Greene. Um, I read some of his other books like um, The Forty Eight Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction. In case anyone's wondering why I seem so powerful and seductive, that's a joke. Okay, <laughs> all right. But but uh, in this other book he wrote called uh, Mastery, which was really good, and this one is just. Yeah, it's kind of a lot about like trying to be more empathetic or other like kind of patterns over like history and human interactions over time where he's like, hey, here's some like thing, like practical tips. So it's like, I feel like I'm learning about history, but it's like, I would normally not like be super into that, but then he like really is able to tie it in with everything that's happening now. I think it came out last year, but it kind of like, I think has a really good perspective on a lot of things so i've been enjoying that um what's your favorite law of power of the 48 so far do you oh that's a good question you know what's funny is there's this one that was like um that's yeah that's the book i think i read right before this and it's similar to the laws of human nature but there's some crossover i think one of the laws of power was funny because it was um like don't be isolated which of course now we have to be, <laughs> which is kind of ironic but i think it still applies in terms of um, I think that was eye-opening for me to be like, oh, I shouldn't just be like alone, like watching Netflix. Like I should, it kind of inspired me to like go to comedy clubs and like try to just be more social. And I realized like, oh, it's so, it's just so much better to like be connected with people and like, you know, that kind of thing. So that, I think that was helpful. And so now it's like, I'm doing that, but more just online now, I guess, because yeah. we can't physically do that. But uh What's the, yeah. what's the psychology? Is it Maslow? Isn't it like the hierarchy of needs or whatever? And it's like, you need to be around. That's like one of them, right? 
Yeah, I'm sure it is. I should know this because I majored in psychology, but I've forgotten. I should know it because it. I brought I brought it up like I kind of knew it, and I was like, he'll <laughs> he'll bring it home for us. Why would I even bring it? I up look like I would know that, sure. and I should. I I have a degree in it that I paid a lot of money for, and I I forgot it. So um, I guess that was a huge mistake going in getting a major in that but uh yeah it was, i know that's up there for sure um so it's a weird time for that i've just been trying to call friends to catch up and things like that but um but yeah i think he actually mentioned something in one of those books about um maybe it was like during the plague or something when these people like thought they were safe because they were isolated but then the way their like for it was set up or whatever it ended up like spreading quicker like once it got there just because it was like kind of all um contained or something i don't know oh boy to see you're now you're tiptoeing on the now you're like in the internet comments of like what about herd immunity huh if we're <laughs> all isolated from it it's gonna burn us down when it gets to us or whatever you gotta oh sure. no yeah i don't think i don't know what kind of listeners you want on this bad boy <laughs> no now uh yeah maybe that was yeah to be clear yeah i know we should be isolated right now it's a different situation but it's great that we can be connected over the internet um true my connection was breaking up a second ago, but I think it's good now. I switched to the hotspot, and uh, I think we're good to go. But some of the some of the stuff you said might have cut out on the recording, so it'll sound like you're saying something really messed up out of context. Good. Um, that's what I. That's what I need is out of context quotes. And a lot of people are gonna. I can. I. I feel like our. I mean, this is only the second episode, but I'm pretty sure our views are in the. I want to say the billions, but don't fact check that. Here's what I can tell you. This is only your second episode, but it is your best episode. Not <laughs> um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how Ronan would feel about that, but uh, yeah, I, I would. Who cares? This is not here. <laughs> yes, I would. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did he say he was doing? I'm not going to listen to his episode. Did he say he was reading a bunch of books and shit? Um, I actually didn't ask him a lot about it because, uh, I, um, I don't really care about him as a person. That's um, a good answer. So I mostly just tried to insult him the whole time. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> you two have, even, I love that even through quarantine, your two, your like petty relationship persists. That, that, that makes my <laughs> heart warm. You know, that makes me feel good to know that you can still hate each other through zoom or facebook or instagram or whatever i love it yeah we're definitely friend of me no it's funny because like a couple of times i tried to like say something nice and he's like oh that's really weird because like you've never complimented me like threw him off so i'm like all right i guess i can never do this again you got to push through that's the you know if you want a friendship to work you got to give them a little sugar and a little bit of spice that's one of the laws of power actually if you haven't you didn't yeah, get to that chapter yet. But. That's in the new edition. I yeah, think. that's the 49th law of powder. Pow yeah. powder. You know, you know what, what's funny? There's actually, a, there's a book called The 50th Law, and it, I haven't read it yet, but it, it's has it's co-written by 50 Cent and this guy. That's crazy. I'm so excited to read it. But uh, Wait, but there's, <laughs> I hate that because it's 48 it and they skip 49. Yeah, I think it's just because his name 50 is 50. For the pun. But you know what? I think you're right. I think the 49th one is unpublished. It's the one, the sugar and spice one you mentioned. Yeah. And, you so, know, I'm sorry, you know, if he didn't want that out there, that put this behind a paywall and maybe we'll get a little money from it. But yeah, I think I'm important. excited to read your book, The 49th Law, all about the sugar and spice part. Um, that sounds awesome. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I've also been reading this book, uh, Don. I always feel like I'm gonna say it wrong. Uh, Don Quixote. Am I saying that right? Don Quixote. Uh, I don't know. Quixote. Yeah, I don't know. Um, You're right. But, now that you said it, uh, it's funny that you bring this up because I was somehow watching Jeopardy, even though I hate Jeopardy, and like there's a, what's the word, quixotic or whatever. That yeah. Like, I think people mix those up a lot, but I think it's Don Quixote or something. Don Quixote. Yeah, you know I always, who would know this? Ron, I would know the answer, and he would make fun of us for not knowing. Yeah, that. you know, I brought it up that I was reading it to him, and he's like, "Oh, you, there's this other edition that's way better." And then I felt like, "Oh man, I felt like really bummed out." Yeah, like, oh, I'm missing out on this sweeter translation somehow. weren't you reading that? How have you been reading that for a while? Is this crazy to bring up, or was someone else? I thought you had been oh. reading that in like February. I wasn't. I actually just started, I think. I might have bought the book in February, but I think I just started reading it a couple of weeks ago. 
so um maybe someone else was talking about it. i mean it's definitely a it's definitely a hit it's uh been around yeah. for 500 yeah. years it's, it's a classic it. but uh yeah i mean it's really funny it's like i mean a lot of comedy like doesn't hold up from like months later or something but i'm like laughing out loud at this stuff that was written hundreds of years ago so. wait it's funny <laughs> i thought it was like i thought it was like uh like zorro or something it's funny was- well no because it, it's it's like zorro in the sense that but but he's delusional so it, it's more like uh he's like a fool you know so he like he's a guy that is actually in a time that was like after the medieval times but he's like delusional so he's like still putting on armor and he's like acting like he's a knight he's like jousting what he thinks are giants but his squire's like no those are like windmills and they like knock him off his horse and he's like oh the wizard turned them into windmills now but he's like very delusional so it's like a lot of it plays like a ucb sketch or like that kind of thing (laughs) because they're delusional and that they're gonna make it and no i mean well (laughs) Because they're delusional in the sense I mean, that they could do it without their parents being. Born. I mean, like the game of the scene, like the the unusual character. But yeah, um, I wasn't trying imp- to say people that perform there are delusional. I mean, like the style of the. We are though. Performers are delusional. You have to. Be. But yes, we're all delusional. Yeah. Of did course. you you did UCB? You did? Did you ever do improv or anything? I did. Yeah, somewhere over here. I have. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have diplomas from. <laughs> Of, uh, Would you I do finished, a scene for me right now? I uh, sure, yeah. I um, yeah. I have. I finished the whole sketch class program and the whole improv class program, and I was retaking one for fun when this ended. When this the shutdown happened, I had one class left in that, but I'd already finished the program. But uh, but yeah, no. I'm actually um, yeah. I've been doing some improv classes online, which I'm hesitant to tell like stand-up comedians. I know a lot of comedians judge improv. Like, I feel like they'd avoid me more for doing online improv than like if I had coronavirus. That is a tough sell. Online improv is a tough sell because it's like, what do you? Is it through Zoom? How do you do it? Yeah, it's usually through Zoom. It works, you know, pretty similar. Kind of like how stand-up is on is a similar translation of what it's like to do improv on zoom i am sometimes nervous doing improv online because uh like i'm worried my neighbors will overhear sometimes like they won't know if it's an improv scene like i'll have to go later to explain whether it was an improv scene or not like one time i was yelling like i'm gonna burn this whole building down and i had to go and be like just so you know that was not an improv scene but uh how dare you did you (laughs) do a bit did you just do a bit i did i did I, i don't know where to do bits i don't know I have no outlet. You do them on a different podcast, okay? <laughs> this is us keeping it real together right here. I know. I don't I don't know how to be funny without trying to s- sneak stand-up bits into conversation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've actually started teaching some improv workshop, too, sometimes at colleges or at um, other events, other online things, which is not something I probably would have done before the quarantine. But I have – I've been doing it so long that it's, like, I guess – I guess I can do that. I don't know, but it feels weird. I could see you being a good, like, uh, for like an office, you know what I mean? Like corporate (laughs) improv teacher. I mean, like, all right, Gary, Gwendolyn, get up here. You know, like that would be like a thing I could. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm trying anything now, now that stand up doesn't exist, you know, I'm just going to try whatever I can. That's comedy related to get through this. But, uh, are you scared? Yeah, I'm definitely scared. I mean, I was only doing comedy the last several years, so which I felt very lucky. And of course, now it yeah, I'm I'm been lucky to still do a couple of college gigs or shows online here and there. But for the most part, yeah, I'm very nervous about it. It's weird to not know like when it's going to come back or that kind of. How about you? What do you think is going to happen with the whole comedy? Yeah, I'm I'm less so like I'm in a weird position because I wasn't. I still have a day job, so I wasn't doing comedy. Comedy wasn't my only uh, income, but I I felt like I was on a path where I was doing more and getting to do better things. And, you know, I've worked the road and all this other stuff. And it's, I think it's, it's frustrating for a person. It's frustrating for everybody. I could see, I could see if it's your livelihood, how scary and frustrating that is. And I could see how if you were thinking about getting into it and now this is like a very weird time. But for someone like me, who's just like kind of in the middle, I've been doing it long enough to be, you know, 
pro in a lot of ways, but it's not my only income. It's just like, it sucks because I don't know how I'm ever going to like push through now because now everybody who is way better than me, who is like working feeders and all this other stuff, they're going to get pushed back down to the stuff like the places I was trying to do, you know, like the, the places I was trying to feature are now going to be, who knows, featuring headliners that I would have liked to work with before. And then, you know, touring like arena comedians where there's no room for a person. Like if you're not local, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't make sense for you to even try to be on the show. So it's, um, I'm not sure. I have, I have to have like the daily realization of like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just don't get to be a full-time comedian anymore. I don't know what the job looks like. I don't know if I necessarily want to. It's kind of scary to think about what if that's my only, what if I'm a working stand-up comedian and that's it, right? And mm -hmm. then something like this happens again. We get shut down again or something else happens. And it's like, I don't even know if that's the responsible move to try to pursue that as a career path. So that part is a little scary, definitely. But I just feel like I'm uh, kind of like in limbo right now. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that it is almost like a moral thing now of like, it seemed like straightforward of like, oh, yeah, we're just trying to make people laugh. But now it's like actually dangerous to like encourage people to. So it's like, I don't know how long, like even if I've even seen other comedians already like in Florida doing shows or whatever, but I'm like, I don't know. Um, yeah like how long it'll be before it's like feels completely safe to like do that or or really go for it so um i don't know um yeah it's it's very crazy but uh anyway um <laughs> uh cool well that's enough about all that <laughs> yeah um don quixote yeah yeah it's good uh i recommend it and uh i don't know yeah are you, have you seen, I don't know. I'm so mad that I can't figure out exactly how to say it and I feel very dumb, but. No, me too. I've, I've been trying to say it for weeks now. I have no idea. But anyway, um, yeah, so I feel like I'm, I'm still learning how to podcast. I was saying how like I've been in quarantine, so I've forgotten how to talk. Although Ronan pointed out that I was always awkward. So I guess this is just normal. Um, it doesn't feel too far off. You're doing great. I love it. This is classic Jacob. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, are you watching anything? I don't know. I, all my conversations are just, uh, I guess I forget that this is a podcast. So I'm just like, this podcast is just directing people to other things they could be doing besides it should listening just be or called, watching podcasts. It should, it should just be called Jacob Williams Misses You. Okay. And then you just call yeah. your friends and then you're like, hey, you up to anything you know like that's all this is i know i i realize like i how much planning is probably supposed to go into a podcast because like what i've been doing is more just like the equivalent of catching up with someone on the phone that's exactly what you're doing <laughs> i what but also i will say i showed up you know i was waiting to be let into the little zoom room and you had multiple cameras you had a little red curtain behind you your hair was all done up like you're taking it, <laughs> it seriously took, you're it was a couple minutes later it took me uh 12 hours to get my hair how i wanted it so i'm sorry for the delay there yeah and then 12 hours and 35 minutes later it finally settled in so good for you. <laughs> right. uh yeah i've been watching some stuff i've been watching my girlfriend and i decided to watch insecure together which is not a show you should watch as a couple at all oh really um, okay but uh, we, I'd, I'd watched like the first season and then I stopped after that. So we just restarted and watched it. And it's a great show. Like if you're, I feel like I don't hear, I don't know if it's like a racial divide. I know it's like a very black show, but I feel like a lot of people were watching it early on. And now I feel like I see it mostly on like black Twitter, people talking about it and shit. But okay. um, it's a great show. And like the actors are amazing. There's so many, you'll see a bunch of comedians, you know, in there, which may or may not be a thing you want to see in a show you're watching but uh there's uh it's pretty fun i don't know she she i remember uh Issa Rae, when it was like nerdy black girl or awkward black girl or something it was like a web series mm -hmm. a long ass time ago and then to see what that was to what the show is now is just like fascinating to see the development there's so much people have so much sex on the show it's crazy wow that's awesome 
hot black people. I know you like that, Jacob. I know. You yeah, like I mean, I did. See, I haven't. I don't think I've actually watched that show yet. I want to check it out. I did see the photograph which she starred in, and um, I cried. It was very moving. Was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was good. It was really good. Uh, funny and good. But uh, yeah, and then um, I don't know. I've been watching. Yeah, I don't know. Um, what have you been watching? You've been watching anything? I got a um, recommendation for you after you tell me what you've been watching. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm curious about this because mm -hmm. I can always okay. tell my stuff. I, um, I stumbled upon this YouTube page of this guy. I, got, I wrote it down. I don't know if I know how to say his name. It's like, it's Mr. Tufu. Few. It's like T-F-U-E. Okay. Google it or YouTube it, whatever. So what this dude does, and I don't know, I, I feel like this is fake somehow i feel like somehow i'm getting got because this is crazy but he just mm. puts up like cameras everywhere and he just builds homes from the ground like he uses a primitive like digging tool and like as few um means as possible and like one the first one i saw was he made a i don't know it was called like mansion for a millionaire in 60 days or something <laughs> And wow. it's like this whole, it's this clay area. And instead of building anything up, he just digs down and then like carves out all the stuff in the, in the ground. And it's wow. amazing. It's like, he's got like bedrooms and he's got like a swimming pool and there's all this different, he like gets water, the, like the water, nothing's shipped in, nothing's, you know, he's not using a bulldozer or anything. He's literally just got this thing where it's just like, it's very ASMR uh, into certain noises too. Uh, and then like just crafting by hand, by eye on camera. And it's amazing. Wow, that's pretty crazy. You got I think I, I think I saw one of his videos pop up. The, maybe the mansion for a millionaire where, yeah, yeah it almost looked like an ancient uh, tomb yep. he was in or something. But that's pretty crazy that he just does it like basically by hand. And he's gonna, he's 100% gonna get skin cancer because, like, he's just out in the sun for days he's, and hours at a time. And there's all these videos. So, like, he's a crispy brown. But oh my gosh. So they man, have some the things he's been doing are very impressive. That's the one thing I'm telling everybody to watch. If wow. You haven't seen it. Okay. I definitely have to check that out. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I have, I've been watching Westworld. I finished Westworld and I couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into the season, Jacob. I tried. Oh, this I new to, season? I got to three episodes in or something. And I was just like, what are we doing? I don't even is it good? Do you like it? I liked it a lot. I think it was my favorite season. Really? Uh, it's probably just nice to see your people on camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, a lot of based on how I talk, a lot of people assume I'm a robot and uh yeah, it's funny because it is this dystopian future about like evil corporations and robot imposters. But at this point, I'm still jealous because I'm like, oh, they can hang out within six feet of each other. That's so awesome. Right. It is nice. But, you know, you can't uh, if you don't have any actual blood or cells, you can't get COVID. You know, that's that's the trade off. If you want to be a robot sex slave so you can't get COVID-19, I'm sure someone can make that happen for you. Oh, yeah, I, I think. I saw that in the news. So you can just make, you can just turn into one a uh, robot. Sure, I'm. <laughs> I think that's doable. We watch, we watch very uh, two very different types of news. I think Jacob. <laughs> I um yeah. What's good Wait. about Westworld this season? What are you like? If you so whatever. Spoiler alert. Skip ahead three minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I got to the I got to the episode where they show. Spoiler. The. <laughs> The, the man in black or whatever. Yeah. So then that's where I stopped. I couldn't get through like the first monologue of that. It, it, is that episode good? Does it get better after that? Because it, it wasn't think, doing it for me. Um, yeah, I feel like it gets really good. There's by the second half of the season, there's a lot of good like action scenes. Uh, you know, what's weird is like my favorite part about it might be that it, it's the first season of Westworld that's not in Westworld. And so yeah. you kind of see all these new places. Whereas like, I felt like it was getting repetitive when it was just in Westworld, but now it's like, oh, we get to see this bigger world and have like these kind of big action scenes later on and um, new situations for these characters, I guess. I'll try it. I don't know, man. I couldn't do it. 
And uh, Suba was in the final episode. Speaking of, Suba? Speaking of comedians in shows, yeah. Really? After the credits of the very last episode, you'll see her in there. Are you serious? That's yeah, I'm great. serious. <laughs> That's good. I don't really know her at all, but I, I feel a weird connection with her. Be- oh, I hate that I said that. You got stop recording and then restart. Uh, no, but... I she you know, did I can um anything you want if you want. <laughs> do you remember those modern comedian things that came out a while ago? And Subo was in one of them. Um, mm-hmm. for, for people who don't know, there's shorts that like featured New York oh, right, right. Yeah, and yeah. LA comedians. Um, they were done by Scott from Scott Moran. They're very good. Um, and Subo was in one of them, and she was like an open mic comic at the time in New York. And she just had this crazy work ethic and was like, how many mics are you doing a week? She was like, I don't know. Like, she'd be like, well, you do this on this, on this day, this on this day. I did like, I don't know, 60 mics a week. It was like something Uh insane. And I was like, shit, that's how hard you have to work to do comedy in New York. It was insane. And now she's in Westworld. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. She's very funny. She's worked really hard. So it was like exciting to see her on that show that I enjoy. And, uh. I don't know you yeah it's uh like you mentioned there's it's always interesting seeing comedians pop up on shows um does, does it take you out of it when you see a comedian um it is interesting it is like oh wow that's uh someone i did a comedy club with or somewhere um it's definitely it can definitely be surprising if you're like happy for them but then you're also like oh, i'm so jealous that's amazing yes yes exactly Cause um, yeah, cause normally when you're watching TV, you're like, oh, I could like if it's a great show or something, you're like, oh man, I I would never like. Of course, I'm not on this. There's no reason why. But then you see someone you know, and you're like, oh, I guess I I should have worked harder. I guess it was actually <laughs> maybe it was obtainable. In but, the in the new season of Insecure, um, Reggie Conquest. I saw him in the trailer. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. and so I don't know Reggie at all. I may. I think I've maybe seen him do comedy a couple times and he's very funny. And, uh, but we have a very similar body type and I'm just like, I, when I saw that, I was like, hell yeah, good for you, Reggie. Then I was like, nah, man, good for us. You know, like he's now representing people who look like me, you know, people who are hot on zoom, but still got a little bit of a beer belly, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's still banging Issa Rae. So that's yeah. awesome. And that's how I felt when I saw Suba. I'm like me and her are basically same. Two we, strong Indian women. Yeah, that's what everyone says about me. So, um, but uh, that's awesome. Well, good for all those New York comics. Um, I'm excited to see them on TV. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I I really haven't planned. I only planned like. I'm so excited for this episode to never air because you're gonna be like, I guess I didn't really. I guess this is just like a fun talk between me and Ben, you know, like that's, I know, I know. I I feel like so much pressure now. I'm like, Oh, I should have planned more. Like let's come up with a theme. Let's come up with a theme for the show right now. You know, what do you want to do? You want to do a game show? You want to, you want to strip? You want to do a push up contest? You want to say (laughs) the N word? You can say the N word. I won't tell, (laughs) but I will share it. (laughs) Um, let's see yeah I don't, I don't know um i didn't i when i listen to podcasts i'm like oh it sounds really easy like they just talk and uh yeah. it's flowing. <laughs> and then i try to do it and it like falls apart immediately and i'm like oh they probably like prepared questions ahead of time and topics and themes to focus on and here's my I, here's my pitch to you okay i think your podcast is this i think it's you talking to people that you want to talk to but all you do is you just you ask them one question and it's and the question is just the one thing you've always wanted to know about that person and that's yeah. the podcast i like that 30 second you put it on instagram you do this you do that bing bang boom you flash a couple pecs in the promo you're good yeah i like that idea i also think i have one thing i have been thinking about is maybe just i'm always like curious about I guess it, maybe it's like cliche to talk about on a podcast, but like every comedian's like different kind of writing process of like how they, but maybe that's like, I don't know if that's been covered so much on other podcasts, but I am curious because you have like, you know, so many great jokes and funny bits and you're like great at also riffing and being in the moment on shows. 
And I like, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more with any of that. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's like one thing I have been thinking about with any comedian I talk to. I'm like, because I feel like maybe I feel weird asking it now or in person, but maybe like a sure. podcast is a good time to ask like how you think of stuff for, yeah, for comedy. Like, oh, I got you. Know. you. Um, I always feel like my writing process is inadequate compared to everyone else. Like, I think a lot of people feel that way, especially people that are, a lot of people I think are good writers say that, and maybe it's like, because you're always just trying to get better and everything, like everyone is just trying to improve on their past stuff, I guess. Yeah, and you're, that's the, there's, the challenge is twofold, right? You're always trying to outdo yourself, and you're always trying to keep up with your peers, and it's just like a very, um, if you, if you lose the blinders, you get lost in a lot of shit really quick, so uh, I don't really, you know, I know people who are like, hey, I wake up and I do morning pages or I write, I make sure I write for an hour every day. And I, I think there are pieces of that that I should be picking up on. But a lot of times it's so much like, not when I'm in, I, not like I'm inspired, but something, my brain will like go on a roll. Something will happen to me or I'll think of something and my brain will just start kind of like going on a roll. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is like a bit. I think I should write this down. Or like I write down a phrase or something on my phone. And then at some point, usually when I'm taking a shower or trying to go to sleep, that's when a lot of stuff of like, oh, here's how I want to write this. Or here's how I want the bit to unfold comes out. I'm not, <laughs> here's a real thing that I probably don't say enough, but it's true. I am not technically proficient at comedy at all i think i'm actually pretty bad at the technical aspect of stand-up comedy i think i i understand it i think i just uh mimic i've throughout i've been doing this for like six years and it feels like so much of it has just been like i mimic the rhythm of the things that i like not necessarily the cadence or the jokes but like the actual like okay i guess i'm here you're in new york you don't have a lot of time so my jokes are like set up, punch, quick, get to the point, say something that catches people's attention because I might be in a crowded bar where they're not listening or, a, you know, a pack club where they want to see someone more famous than me. So like, I don't know. I think my process and the jokes I have are a real, um, what's the word? Is amalgamation a word? <laughs> something, <Sure>. uh, <laughs> combination of so many different things of just like trying to survive in this room trying to survive in this room and then as I get older and deeper into comedy just being like okay I'm trying to survive in these rooms but like also injecting myself my personality into the jokes I think that's where a lot of like my I I go into the crowd a lot more than I do I like to try to weave the jokes into talking to the crowd but not really talking to the crowd more just like acknowledging that the crowd exists so they don't feel like they have to talk to prove to me that they exist and um that's just been i was having a lot of fun exploring all of that that's so those so many words uh, i promise my jokes are shorter but like <laughs> the i was having so much fun exploring all of that before this happened so i am a little nervous coming back if we ever you know whenever we come back of like i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna look like as a comedian i'm doing zoom shows a little but I'm not using them to stay. I was doing Zoom open mics because I had like a gig I couldn't get out of and I hadn't done stand up in two months, which is the longest I haven't done stand up since before I was doing stand up. So mm -hmm. I was doing a few Zoom things, but I realized once I get back, I don't want to be the exact same comedian that I was before all of this happened. I hope maybe I take a little time to expand a little more or explore stuff that maybe I wasn't exploring before. So my process is all the fuck over the place. Like I'm the <laughs> worst person to ask, but a lot of times it's like someone being, being a black person in America is just always great inspiration. You should try that if you can. Um, yeah, I've tried many times. That's never, I've never been able to do it. Never happened for you. To, uh, for those who don't know, I'm also adopted. So there's always a lot of like just weird cultural stuff that'll come across my plate. And a lot of, my jokes are just filtered through my experience or um, my thoughts on a certain situation. That's what it really comes down to. But like any technical shit, I'm the worst person to ask, truly. Cause like 
you can see it here. These are, it's just like, okay, these are the jokes that I've been doing and that I want to try. Um, Here's some other shit, some notes on that. I tape I'm it writing up. all those down. I'm like, yeah. uh, <laughs> You're like, oh, my dad is white. Okay. <laughs> I have um, a joke about my dad being white. Well, we're gonna. One of us is gonna have to lose it. Um, <laughs> but it's not. I just. I. I do feel inadequate in that. There's. I. A lot of writing for me is getting on stage. That's. I. I guess I kind of. I fail a lot at open mics, and then between mic one and mic two i'll come up with a better punchline or a better tag or whatever that's where a lot of my work gets done yeah i mean that totally makes sense i mean every it's funny because you're talking about not you don't feel like you're proficient but then all the stuff you list it sounds like you're doing all the right stuff and it clearly works i mean i've seen you kill many times at shows and so it's i mean it's great that you're i feel like you're being humble but uh you're like clearly are doing the right I, I'm not yes. getting dude. Like <laughs> I think, I think I have a good combination of like semi interesting. As I get more into this, it's not that interesting, but like semi interesting origin story, background, whatever. And then like I feel like if you consume comedy enough, you pick up the rhythm, right? Like you, if we've been yeah, watching, absolutely. we've been watching Comedy Central for however many years, you know, uh, and then uh, you know, like if you watch funny movies, your timing just gets, to, and you watch stand up you get the timing of it. So like, I, uh, there's so many funny people that we know, like Ron on, I feel like works really hard. Um, Steve yeah. Rogers, Sam Evans, black comedians that I know that I like that I'm Norlex. <laughs> I'm like, Oh God, I gotta say somebody who's not a pasty white guy. Uh, uh, Kenise Mobley, all these people who are just like so funny. And honestly, one of my favorite comedians who you should have on this, and you should ask him about his process mm -hmm. is Ethan Simmons Patterson because he truly okay. is I don't think probably I oh man he's from Chicago too you guys uh would have an interesting combo but he's um he's just, he's a younger dude he's maybe like 25 26 now and like he's in grad school right now or he just finished grad school is in grad school like works at a hospital but also tells the best jokes mm -hmm. that I he's one of my favorite comedians and he's he's young so he's got that young person's perspective but he's from like south side chicago i think and like he just he's got he's lived a life and it's like my per, my wow. favorite combination of uh comedy and stuff awesome so, cut this out i don't want this part get it <laughs> nobody else gets praised but me <laughs> i'm just gonna cut out everything but that part that you, <laughs> perfect um yeah no that's awesome yeah it's funny because you were saying yeah i think every comedian feels that way that they're always like oh i feel like i'm not doing enough but then like all this stuff you said it sounds like you're doing all the right stuff and it's paying off um but yeah of course now it's like a weird time it doesn't matter now we all got to pivot now we're all now you're doing a podcast you know i'm i'm selling my feet online for money you know? like, <laughs> we're all pivoting now yeah exactly yeah i want to start a, a webcam show where people pay me to keep my clothes on that's good that's thank a good you. bit if thank that's you. a bit that's a good bit to keep <laughs> i don't know how to i feel like every time i have a conversation like on a podcast or anywhere like i can either be like really boring or i have to like somehow fit one of my stand-up jokes into conversation <laughs> yeah there's a middle ground between those two. i know i feel like you are really good at that <laughs> middle ground where like i feel like you're someone that's funny at like a party or hanging out at a comedy club with comedians but then you're funny like as funny on stage like a lot of people are one or the other they're like you know but it's like you have like you're authentic on stage and off stage but like in a way that's i haven't figured out how to do that yet i'm still working on it but uh i think you just i think you just be you you know i feel like you're uh not comfortable doing that you're you're a bits guy so you do bits that's who you are that's good yeah like, I'll we're, you might get shit for it sometimes but like you don't shy away from it you know it's that's so then we're like ah that's Jacob showing that personality we love <laughs> it doing a bit I think sometimes it gets a little dicey if you're doing a bit that you've done on stage in casual conversation right right Nobody which is what I've been doing anytime <laughs> so I've said anything amusing that's in this podcast. but uh, uh this is fine because this is technically a podcast right, so right. you can putting bits in here is fine but i feel like you know if you're at like a funeral and then you're doing your tight 10 
on dating or something, people are going to know and they're going to be a little bit. Oh, so that's why it was so awkward. I'm like, my grandma, when I gave the eulogy, I can see why now they didn't want to hear my take on online dating while I was memorializing. You're like, everybody gathered here real quick. Are you more of a Tinder crowd or a hinge crowd? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, hinge like just on this coffin, am I right? Uh, Whoa, hey man, that's your grandma, dog. (laughs) Shit. Uh, but uh i'm sorry grandma if you're listening i i felt like my grandma was actually heckling me the other day because my aunt has this clock from my grandma and i did like an hour set on zoom and the clock would go off every 15 minutes um and so it was like my grandma was like it which also like when it goes off every 15 minutes that's a good way to tell how your set is going but based on like how long it feels like it was since the last (laughs) one sure that's fun. Did you really do an hour set? I've done, yeah, I've done a few hour sets on Zoom. Oh, that's a um, lot. It, yeah, it was a lot. That's what the, some of the audiences said. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, that wasn't for me. I was just reading your comment cards. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it's been an adjustment. The first one I did, like someone started screen sharing porn on the at the Zoom show. And happened. my parents were there. Like, I'm pretty sure they had never seen porn. I'd never seen porn as far as they know. Um, <laughs> and it was, like, really messed up porn. I was like, did they just look at my own search history and use that? You're an animal. Was uh, it, like, child porn, Jacob? <laughs> it was, like, that episode of Black Mirror where uh, that's a spoiler, but I'm not going to say which episode it was. Which episode of Black Oh. There's one that involves that. Yeah, I, I know exactly. That's not a spoiler. There's... Well, it's kind of the twist of that episode, but I won't say which one it is. So then you'll just have to watch them all and wonder which one ends with that element, I guess. Remember when Black Mirror was like this cultural, just like a a talking point for everyone? And it's like, have you seen Black Mirror? And now we get to the point where people are like, yeah, man, UFOs exist and there might be a parallel (laughs) universe. And people are like, who has the time? You know, like I don't. (laughs) That's it. That feels so far away that we were into sci-fi shit, and now we don't care at all. Yeah, we're kind of living in a sci-fi situation, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Well, a, I don't know. There's a there's a rocket launch this week. Did you know that NASA's like? No. Wow. They're, they're launching a rocket on Tuesday, I think. Oh, that's interesting. What are the odds that it blows up? Like that's the story. That's like the world that we're living in right now there's almost no way that goes well right like something bad's gonna happen yeah i don't know a lot about that but that is like an interesting time to do a rocket they're like yeah all this this pandemic is happening but it's probably like 12 people are just like i'm done with this shit um let's just put me on mars i'll figure it out i'd rather (laughs) they're like it's the only place i can social distance everyone's still running into me all the time i'd rather try to you know create new life on a dead planet than figure out old life on this fucking rock so <laughs> good for them yeah um well um anyway um will you yeah, put you mentioned... pictures up will you put pictures up during this podcast like if i mention a rocket will you mention will you put a picture of the rocket up or something that's a good question i don't think i have the like technology to do that uh okay. what i can do Great. is act like sh- space right now sure I'm like oh, okay. oh i'm now i'm social distancing or whatever but um well, you think you're you think you're tough huh you think because you're fucking in space you're better than me you're not better than me <laughs> um yeah i mean uh i have had i have been having fun with these zoom backgrounds sometimes i'm uh, i pretend like i'm on a roller coaster I'm like Whoa. you're 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 in space you're on a roller coaster on a roller coaster I am space. Uh, oh, is that the, wow? That's that's look like a Marvel villain. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I wonder if I think I could do something like that. Is this? I'm I'm invisible you, and in space. That's great. This is this <laughs> two cosmic deities just having a chat on Zoom. Is what this looks like. Yeah. Hey, Jacob, haven't seen you in eternity. <laughs> Now we're doing improv online. <laughs> I learned from the best, or you know, the best that I could afford, which is you. <laughs> um, I also have 
uh, I did a roast show, which was like to uh, like just you're supposed to roast yourself on a Zoom show or something. And uh, I realized like I didn't have to write any new jokes because like my whole act was roasting myself. That's that is actual factual. That is one hundred percent true. But uh, they had a picture of me from high school, which was kind of disturbing. Like this is the picture, and um, yeah. I was like, oh geez. I'm really glad I like dressed up for a picture day, you know. <laughs> but uh, did you go to a public school or a private school? I went to a private school, which might have been a mistake because afterwards I realized my my parents what they'd saved to like help me with college they kind of spent on my high school and they're like, all right, you don't really have a lot of options for college, but um, but I'm very happy with my college uh, experience and stuff. Where did you go to college, Jacob? Uh, I went to Beloit College, which is a, a great school. Um, it was definitely a, kind of a weird place in terms of starting comedy because it was, I was like the only comedian at the time and stuff, but it was kind of a supportive environment, which was nice. Yeah, like a market share of the comedy. That's great. <laughs> Did you start, uh, where did you start, in New York? No, I started yeah. in Minnesota. Oh, um, that's right, yeah. And awesome. then I started in a place outside of Minneapolis, like about 90 minutes outside of Minneapolis called St. Cloud, which if you Google it, you'll see that the New York Times did a story about how racist it is. So wow. I'm doing all right. And Crazy. my actual hometown, Albany, Minnesota, is currently locked in a legal battle because they're trying to open up the local bar sooner. They don't want to wait two weeks to open up the bar. They're like, wow. I'm telling my grandma, I'm trying to get fucked up now, dude. So that's where I started comedy. It's great. I miss wow. it. That's crazy. I always thought St. Cloud was where all of my data goes when it doesn't, when I save it on my, um, on my phone. Um, I anyway. So I hate you so much. That's, we're friends. Why are you putting me through this shit? I, I'm you know? sorry. I had, I'm I, here for you. That was for the people, the two people watching this or however many people are going to watch. This. But uh, I'm not very popular online. But um, but anyway. Um, kidding me? Jacob, you're, the, you're truly the only comedian I have been with, um, I would say sexually, at least, in the last <laughs> two or three years, where we've been stopped on the street multiple times of like people being like yo is this you and it's like a picture of you from your wild and out day okay <laughs> like I, I remember very specifically being in a story about the train and a bunch of young hot teens came up to you and were like yo you're so funny on that show and it was very annoying to me and rana and the other comedian who was with me obviously do you remember that because i think about that i do time. yeah that's very nice of you to say and we um, were on the train that one time and that kid was trying to like take like sneaky like upskirt pictures of you and like trying you remember you told me that yeah i didn't yeah I didn't, that was great yeah. i was like oh wow i can't believe jacob is my most famous friend but here we are i feel bad for you if that's if that's the case i uh i'm trying dog I'm not, but I'm not famous. you gotta take what you can get you know <laughs> um yeah i guess um I think I'm just going to edit everything out, except that uh, that's really all I want out of this podcast is just yeah. one person uh, letting people know that I, okay, once in a while I get recognized. That's You should do that. You really should, the podcast should just be one thing you want to know about someone else and one compliment that they give you. That's it. Yeah. Or just the compliment. I think I'm just going to, every, all of these are, I'm going to record about an hour, but then I'm going to only post people compliment compl like once like 45 minutes and then when i trick someone into complimenting me finally that'd be very like funny. that's what that's all i needed it's a um, colossal waste of their time which makes the bit even fun <laughs> you mentioned that it's funny because like you mentioned like some comedians will like write an hour a day and do morning pages i have i think the morning pages i have been doing that's helped and i started writing an hour a day recently but it was kind of the worst timing because i basically it was super recent so it was like basically as the pandemic was starting and it's like oh this is what i should have been doing when i could get on stage now it's like sure i'm going like trying to become a gold prospector like now like way after the actual gold you know yeah so it doesn't really make any sense but you never know there's still a couple you know maybe there's not gold but there's some aluminum left you can you know mine that <laughs> and put together a floor or some shit no, yeah that's, that's linoleum um <laughs> <laughs> But I think here's what I, I do think like now is a great time for self-reflection, right? Like 
yeah. most of us don't have a ton going on. So if you're taking an hour a day just to look inward, like you'll find good, you'll find stuff that will be usable for you. So it's not, it's not a, it's not like a total loss. It's just, just different. That's all. It's fine. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh and then I hear some comedians are like writing screenplays or books or things like that. And I'm like, Oh man, I feel like, am I like supposed to be doing other cool stuff like that? I don't know. But if they're talking about it, their shit probably sucks. You know, like everybody who's really doing shit, is not isn't like yeah i'm working on my screenplay during quarantine they're just like hey you know i'm staying busy and trying to stay alive whatever blah 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 and then when we get out of this they'll have like five new judd apatow produced vehicles or <laughs> that's even worse now i'm just imagining all the people that are being more <laughs> productive than me that i don't even know about it's so many they're not talking honestly. About. <laughs> yeah it's like we don't really know what everyone's doing that's what i'm trying to find out i guess with this podcast one yeah. by one i want to i want to keep tabs on every comedian so i can maybe that's the thing this not is a podcast anyone... to make you feel better about yeah. yourself that's pretty good <laughs> yeah um okay cool well um i guess we could wrap up but uh are, do you have any final thoughts or <laughs> what's your blood type oh um that's it it's oh um oh um no, I don't. I don't know what it is. I I should probably get that looked at. And get the antibodies checked. And Something everything. to think about, you know. I like that you have a Billy Joel cup that you're drinking out of. This. Yeah, I actually. I feel got like that is out. this a paid product placement by <laughs> Billy Joel? Oh, this. Yeah, like. <laughs> I forgot I had it. I got this at an Elton John concert, actually. <laughs> you just show up and you get paid every time you show it on a podcast. I wish that's my drinking cup, baby. I'm drinking tequila. I'm trying to get rocked. <laughs> um do you have any any uh plugs or uh things you'd like people to check out i'm not going to talk about my hair on this podcast so, um, <laughs> there you go and a dad joke he can do it all folks yeah i got a couple of plugs if you could put them first because no way will anybody no, by the way yeah i should clarify no one probably no one <laughs> i don't i i, I don't think Contractually, every, every single comedian has a podcast so like there's no way they're looking for a new podcast but i'm trying contractually i would like this part at the front of the podcast and <laughs> you need to make sure to write out all of my socials uh here's <laughs> what i'll say every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern uh myself chloe radcliffe caitlin palufo two very funny comedians um three very funny comedians <laughs> okay sorry about that we do a streaming show on YouTube. It's called Something Good. Um, you can find all of our social media stuff or find us on YouTube uh, at Something Good NY. That's all you got to search. You'll find us. Um, my personal social media is uh, Twitter, uh, at Shaq Katzner. Shaq, like the basketball player, Katzner, K-A-T-Z-N-E-R. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, and Tom Hanks is innocent. That's it. <laughs> i don't i don't know what that's a is tom hanks is that a thing is there a scandal or something i no nah, i'm just people need to know tom hanks is innocent you know what the fuck of, what you heard of what boy, what is he accusing that's a funny thing to say about something that i don't i'm not aware of there that's like a, the best way to make someone actually suspicious is to just be like ben katzner is innocent i don't care what people say but then they look but then they look it up and they're like oh there's nothing here point proven yeah that is uh something to point. think about well uh yeah check out that show and ben on social media is very funny and uh you can find me at mr jacob williams on social media uh this has been jacob's chatter please subscribe I'm, I, i've never <laughs> i'm supposed to ask people to subscribe and you straight um, up you got to figure yeah. out what the fuck you're trying to do so you can have <laughs> confidence in how you say it i you're know like, i was like as i was saying it i was like I do this I separately is this weird uh, to do it in the interview i don't know no. but uh but yeah i haven't really researched i don't know if this will ever be released or what platforms it'll be on but uh no i think it'll be on youtube and stuff uh thanks for doing it and uh yeah have a good quarantine <laughs> until i talk to you yeah baby i love right, you. you see you later bye <laughs>